So now once a monocyte has come in, so th this is the monocyte, what would happen? So this monocyte came in, what would happen then? Now it is inside the tissue, it knows it came in due to a chemotactic factor, hopefully, it can come in otherwise as well, what is it going to do? So remember this, do not forget this. First thing, first thing, it's going to enlarge by 5 times. So this x normally means time. So it's going to become 5x. It's going to become bigger, 5 times bigger. So that is one thing. And number two, it is going to mature its lysosomes. So a monocyte which enters the tissue will not become active right away. It is an immature cell. It is a cell which is not fully grown up yet. It's a baby cell. It's a baby monster. Remember, macrophages are badass. These are really bad dudes. But this is a really little bad dude yet. The monocyte which has come into the tissue, once it is inside the tissue, once it knows that here is my mission, I have to go and do something here, then it starts swelling up and it swells up up to five times. Number one. And number two, a lot of lysosomes are produced inside. The digestive enzymes are produced inside. So the cells now becomes a mature macrophage which is now ready to become participant in immune system. Right? So now we know the monocytes originate from bone marrow. They come out of the bone marrow, go into the blood vessels. They circulate in the blood system for 10 to 20 hours. Within that time frame, they extravasate from the blood vessels into the tissue. Once they are into the tissue, inside the tissue, they become bigger by five times. They increase their lysosomal sizes and proteins inside the lysosomes, and that is how they become mature. Now these guys are mature macrophages. So inside the tissue, they become macrophages. So this is a good time that we talk about that various macrophages which are present inside various tissues, what are these macrophages called and what function do they perform? So let's just very quickly see what do we have there. So keep an eye here at the locations and here we go. Look at this. So first of all, when these guys are present in the blood, these are called monocytes. So monocytes, they're present in the blood, they're smaller, they're non-active or their activity is negligible. Then, if they're present in the tissue, normally when the monocytes or the macrophages which are present inside the connective tissue, these are called the histiocytes. So the histiocytes, they're attached to the cells. They're also sometimes called dendritic cells depending upon their appearance. Of course, the dendritic cell would mean that the parents, they have a lot of dendrites. So uh, we'll, we'll show, the, show you a picture of the dendritic cells. But anyways, they can go inside the tissue, general connective tissue, and sit there called histiocytes or called the dendritic cells. Then they're present in, under the skin. If these guys are present in the, under the skin, the macrophages, these are called Langerhans cells. Why are they called Langerhans cells? Remember the Dr. Langerhan who found them when he was in fourth year medical studies and in his honor these cells, the macrophages present under the skin are called Langerhans cells. Now remember this is different from Langerhans cells. Langerhans cells are giant cells, fused macrophages. We'll talk about it later today in today's lecture when macrophages they cannot digest things then they try to circulate around them, they try to wrap them, and so multiple macrophages, they fuse together to try to make a big capsule in the center of which they have that particle which they cannot digest. So that huge big cell is called epithelioid cell, or that is called the giant cell, or that is called the Langerhan cell. So remember, Langerhan is a cell, a macrophage present under the skin. Langerhan are fused macrophages making a giant cell. These are, again, macrophages, but different things. So then, if you look at the macrophages, they're present in the liver as well. The liver sinuses are lined by macrophages. So remember what happens, the portal blood from the GIT, it, it flows through the portal system into the liver, into the liver sinuses. And who is sitting on the side of the liver sinuses? The macrophages. What are they doing? They're fishing. What are they fishing? Bacterias, pathogens coming, attacking us from the GIT. 
imagine this we're eating all kinds of foods we're eating all type of problems germs pathogens these are getting absorbed once they get absorbed they go into the liver so liver sinuses they receive the blood from the coming from the portal system from the git who is sitting there macrophages are sitting there they're looking at the blood they have their little tentacles moving in the blood what do they do they look for the pathogens and they're going to capture them do you know the efficiency of a macrophage in a liver this is very important don't forget this the efficiency of a macrophage in the liver it can phagocytose it is it's beautiful a macrophage sitting in a liver sinus can phagocytose a bacteria or a pathogen within the hundredth of a second so that means what in one second one macrophage can eat up 100 bacteria sitting in our liver sinuses it's beautiful so let's say this is the liver here this is the liver here portal blood is bringing the blood from the git i hope you understand that it's not coming from duodenum but anyways the blood is coming from the git in here and here are the liver cells and then we have the sinuses right macrophages are sitting here along the liver sinuses what are they doing they are sitting there and they are looking for pathogens coming from the git what are they going to do they're going to phagocytose them and how what is the speed of phagocytosis with the phagocytose one cell one pathogen within the hundredth of a second so imagine millions of phagocytes sitting inside the liver sinuses every phagocyte eating up 100 bacteria per second just imagine what a neat system do you know that with this activity of these phagocytes our blood in the cardiovascular circulation not in the portal circulation but the blood in the remaining closed system is free of pathogens not even one bacteria enters the blood while well, i'm i'm exaggerating very very tiny fraction of bacteria or almost none all of those bacteria are filtered out by the fact by the macrophages present in lining the liver sinuses very very important what are these cells called these are called kupfer cells you must have heard you must have read in the histology of the liver kupfer cells what are the kupfer cells these are the resident macrophages sitting in the liver they also have one more thing have you read alcoholism yet have you read the toxic effect of alcohol on the liver so one effect which you might know is the the fatty liver right that is because of the nadph and those things and causing the metabolic uh, derailment of the liver functions but there is one more thing check this out do not forget this this is a very important concept a chronic alcoholic because of alcohol abuse don't forget this because of alcohol abuse the git of the alcoholic becomes more permeable to the things passing from the git into the portal blood this of course will mean this extra permeability due to alcohol the git surfaces will become extra permeable due to alcohol what is the what is the uh, disadvantage of that the pathogens more and more pathogens will enter from the git into the portal system that would mean more and more pathogens would end up in the liver that will mean more and more macrophages inside the liver will encounter the pathogens yes okay what will that do we would read in our today's lecture that that the macrophages when they detect the pathogens when they detect the bacteria they engulf the bacteria they phagocytose the bacteria and in the liver they also cause the stellate cells of the liver to stimulate them how would they stimulate them we'll talk about it there are chemical factors which are released and result is the stellate cell will be stimulated when this stellate cell is stimulated that cell in turn would release collagen why because stellate cell is trying to do the repair and when collagen so let me just spill the beans here macrophage would release tumor growth factor beta 
when it would find a pathogen coming in. Tumor growth factor B.